Okay, let's talk about the growth, though, Ian. I mean, as a manager, you over there grassroots with everybody, seeing mm -hmm. exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. What was it like when you started to see the growth, and what do you think were the tipping points that allowed them to be successful? Well, you know, it, it's it's funny and scary at the same time. Like, I was just, Rico threw me in the deep end of the water, the deep mm -hmm. end of the pools. Like, now you really, this isn't play play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we're not looking for you to shift us to anybody else. You're going to have to step up. So yeah. I'm, now I find myself in meetings with L.A. Reid. I had to hire a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When they needed the musicians that played on the record. Yeah. Because I was a, a roadie for so many musicians back in the day, I knew and I knew these bands. I would yeah. go, okay, yo, yeah, y'all come, you play, yo, we, we gonna do these jam sessions, record these jam sessions over here at the studio, and uh, uh, so I was doing all of that stuff. Yeah, for them, um, the tipping point is when uh, we got the "What About Your Friends" remix, mm. and we featured Outcast on that remix. Yeah. And um, then it was like, okay. And people started paying attention, and LA's like, we're doing a Christmas album. Let's let's see what you could do for the Christmas album. Now, I had to go back then, you know, and, you know. So I'm telling Rico this, and Rico's like, all right, well, yeah, go tell the boys. It's, that's your job, <laughs> not my job. Go tell them they gotta be on a Christmas record. <laughs> so I, I went there, and they, boy, they were not hearing it. My God, they were not hearing it. They weren't happy about it. Um, I was like, you know, our, our first time out, you you know, you want us to do a Christmas record, a holiday record. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was like, look, just do a record that, that speaks to your Christmas. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And they got together with Organized Noise and, and came up with Players Ball. How did things change when Players Ball hit and we had success on our hands now? But you know what, see, but it was local success. Mm. You understand? It was hot here, but New York and L.A. weren't ready. Now, the, the Bay Area loved Outkast. Okay. The Texas area loved Outkast, but L.A. and New York, they weren't ready. My God. They, they weren't ready, you know. So we had to really push some buttons. And I, I give a lot of props to Shanti Das, mm -hmm. who was the director of uh, marketing, promotions and marketing for LaFace Records. Yeah. Because she busted her ass. Can I say, no, say what you feel. Okay. Yeah. She busted her ass um, getting them out there, you know, mm. doing things that would get them noticed, putting them in the presence of people you know, because she was with them at that infamous Source Awards when they got booed. Yeah. And the legendary lines were said, the South got something to say. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? So she was in the room with them during that time. Mm -hmm. So, um, but she, she worked her ass off and the boys were villaging. You know what I'm saying? They weren't to be denied. Exactly. Speaking of being at the uh, deep end of that pool, when you first get into the game, you're already at the deep end of the, uh, of the pool, but when the success starts to happen, it starts to get a little more crazy. It, it, people start looking at you different. Now. Okay. So now more people that? are paying attention yeah. to what it is that you're doing, mm -hmm. and people are waiting for you to fail. People are waiting for you to fail. And that was my big thing. Well, cause I was doing things. Hold that your I breath, thought, motherfuckers. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I was doing things for for organizers I thought were good, and they just turned out not to be so good. So I began questioning my my abilities yeah. to to actually be an effective manager for them. Damn. You know, and um, uh, so when when Sylvia Rohn, Sylvia Rohn was one of the people that was keeping her eye. On Atlanta, yeah, uh, she and Merlin Bob, and when they reached out to me, uh, saying, "Okay, I, we we see we see what you're doing. We recognize your movement, and we want to be a part of that." Mm. Um, I was I was intrigued because number one, I always wanted to work for Sylvia Rohn. Mm. Uh, number two, working with a major label like Electra as an A and R person was like a dream, dream true. job. Yeah. yeah, it's a dream job. Um, so I ended up going there. I, I, uh, a partner of mine, Eric Johnston, and I put together a group called Mister. Okay. And I ended up taking Mister over there to Electra Records, and at the, that, and then uh, Sylvia Rome gave me the job as an A and R director. Mm. So, 
how did that play with you being a manager and then going over there being the A and R director? I I sort of relinquished my management responsibilities. Okay. Okay. On, on uh, with organized noise, I had already relinquished my management responsibilities for Outcast because. Okay. For me, it was a conflict of interest to managing the production company and managing the artists. Okay. Like, who can the artist complain to? You can't yeah. come to me. They <laughs> did, but you know, was you know, I'm looking at Rico and like, well, nigga, I put you, I put you with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you manage him because of me. You know what I'm saying? So when I I was like, okay. Y'all need to get, y'all need to, your management game needs to step up. Y'all need to go over there. So at the time, they went over to a Flavor Unit with mm -hmm. Queen Latifah and Shaq okay. and That's where they met Michael Blue Williams. And okay. then Michael Blue Williams took over shortly after that. Um, but as far as organized noise goes, I was like, I called Rico one day. I was like, look, man, I, I don't feel like I'm doing you guys justice. Mm. You know, and I had somebody in mind to kind of come in and not be the manager, but run the business of organized noise. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think at that point I went and left and went to, uh, well, I stayed here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. but uh, I was the uh, director of A&R for Electra Records for Sylvia Rome. 